Now it's time to learn the digraph sounds with NG. There are five in total, one for each vowel. Are you ready? The first one is A-N-G. A, N, Ang, Ang, Ang. Good. For example, we have fangs. F, Ang, fangs. Good. There's also bang, b, ang, bang. Good. And then there's also hang, h, ang, hang. Once again, a n g is ang, ang, ang. Nice. The next one is e n g, eng, e, ng, eng, 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 eng. Like in strength, strength. The strong man has a lot of strength. Good. Then there is English, English, eng, eng, English. And finally, England, England. England is a country that speaks English. Good. There aren't many words with ENG. Here are the main ones. The next one is ING. E, ng, ing, 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 ing. Basically, everything with continuous verb is ing. Walking, dancing, singing, running. Another example is swing. Sw, ing, swing. Then there's king. K, ing, king, good. And then spring, spr, ing, spring, nice. Once again, ing is ing, 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 very good. Next we have ong, 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 good. For example, we have wrong. Wrong, r, ong, wrong. Then there's strong, strong, str, ong, strong. Very good. And then long, long, l, ong, long. Very good. Once again, o n g is ong, ong, ong. Nice. Finally, we have u n g. A, ng, ang, 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 ang. For example, we have lung, l, ang, lung. Good. We also have stung. The boy got stung, st, ang, stung. Good. And finally, hung, h, ang, hung. Very good. Now it's your turn to do some practice. See if you can spot the correct digraph NG sounds in the following words. The first one is string. Ing, ing, string. Which NG digraph is in string? Good. Str, ing, string. Ing, ing, ing. What about this man? His name is Peng. Peng, peng, peng. What's the correct NG digraph in peng? Good. P, eng, peng, E-N-G, eng, eng, eng. What about flung? He flung the water balloon. Flung, fl, ang, flung. Good. Ang, ang, U-N-G, fl, ang, flung. Next we have gang. This gang has many cats. A gang of cats. G and gang. What's the NG digraph sound in gang? Nice. G ang gang ang ang ang. And then there is song. They sing a song. Song song song. What's the controlled NG digraph? Nice. S ong song. Ong, 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 O-N-G. 
Now, if you can read these words, it means you're ready for some reading practice. Try to read this first sentence, and I'll give you a moment. Are you ready? Peng brings the wrong English book home. Good. Peng brings the wrong English book home. Nice. If you can read this one, then try this one. This is harder. I'll give you a moment. The gang got stung in the lungs with a bang. Good. The gang got stung in the lungs with a bang. Nice. That's tricky. But if you can read this one, then try the final one. Here it is. I'll give you a moment. The king sang a song while playing ping pong. Good. The king sang a song while playing ping pong. Nice. That's hard. If you can read that one, you're amazing and it means you're ready for the review. Today we learned five ng diagraph sounds. The first one is ang. Ang, 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 bang. Good. Then we have ENG, 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 English. Good. And then ING is ING, 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 KING. Nice. Then there's ONG, 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 WRONG. And then UNG, ANG, 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 LUNG. Very good. Take your time to practice and memorize these five NG diagraph sounds. And when you're ready, I'll see you in the next class for some more phonics fun. That's all for today. I'll see you next time. Bye-bye. For Comic Book Tuesday this week, we are reading Noodle Heads Find Something Fishy by Ted Arnold, Martha Hamilton, and Mitch Weiss. Are you ready? Let's go. I'm Mac, and I'm Mac. Where noodle heads? See in here? Nothing. Zippo, nada. Hey Mac, look! Someone is throwing away a perfectly good fish stick. I wish we knew how to fish. We can learn. Okay, let's take it home. Good thinking. Ooft! This fish stick won't fit between two trees. Let me try. Oof! You're right, it won't fit. How will we ever get it home? I know, we'll break it into two pieces. Two pieces fit through nicely. Now, when we learn how to fish, we can catch twice as many. Chapter 1, how to grow a boat. One morning, a few weeks later, mum had an idea for Mac and Mac. Don't just sit inside being bored, Go outside and enjoy this beautiful day. Get out there and learn something new today. Here's a snack and a coin for each of you. Now out you go. Wow, I didn't see that coming. Nope, it's not fair to make us learn. It's not even school day. Hey Mac, we could learn how to catch a fish. We'll show mum we can learn something new. I bet we can even learn three things. So, I guess, first we have to learn where fish live. I heard fish live in schools. They must be smart. Hey, is that a fish out there? Wait, fish live in the water, way out there. This fish stick won't reach that far and we can't swim. What do we do? I know. Hmm. Oh, hi Meatball! Hi guys! Did I hear you want to catch fish in the deep water? Deep water? Maybe. Then you need a boat. And I have one. A toy boat? We won't fit in it. If you feed it, it will grow. Just put in some food and take a nap. It will grow while you sleep. Bye now. Cool! Sounds fishy to me. I'll put my snack in it. Now we nap. 
uh, if you say so later. Yawn. Look, the boat ate my snack, but it didn't grow. It needs your snack too. Sounds fishy to me. Now we nap again. Uh, if you say so later. Yawn. Look, the boat ate your snack, but it didn't grow. It must not like our food. I will put in my coin. While you we nap, the boat can buy its favorite food. Uh, if you say so. And while they're sleeping, look at what happens. This is Meepaw, supposed to be their friend, and he's gone. But look, it's a frog. The frog is thinking, what a couple of noodle heads sleeping when they could be fishing later. Hey, Mac, guess what? The boat grew up. The boat grew up. Woohoo! Time to go fishing. Chapter 2 Finding Fish. Boats are fun. So, how do they work? Let's do what that guy is doing. What? Wear a hat? No, we use these boat sticks to go. Oh, yeah. Boating is fun. Paddle, paddle. Boating is hard. Paddle, paddle. We aren't moving. A rope is tied to the boat. It won't let us go. The rope is too short. Here is a longer rope. It will reach all the way out to deep water. Yay, we are boating. Look, Mac, a fish lives here. Let's catch it. How? With some nice tasty worms. We don't have worms. Where do we get them? The fish says, at Miss Froggy's bait shop. Back to shore. Wait, he's gone. So? So if we leave this spot, how will we find the fish again? We need to mark this spot. How? I have an idea. The fish was right here by the boat. So I will mark this spot with an X. Good thinking. Now back to shore. Look out worms, here we come. We only have one coin left. I wonder how many worms we can buy. This coin will get you three worms plus the boat rental. Only three worms plus the boat rental. Wait, what does boat rental mean? Who cares? We've got fish sticks, we've got a grown-up boat, we've got a long rope, and we've got worms. Time to go fishing. Chapter 3, The Biggest Fish. Are we there yet? Look for our mark. Yup, there is our mark. So this is the spot where the fish lives. Hey, and there it is. Did you bring the worms? We have the worms. Now what? Did you bring the hooks to put the worms on? Hooks? We need hooks? We're all out of coins. Relax, forget the hooks. Why? If you hooked me, then you could not pull me into your boat. I'm too big. You're being silly. You're just a tiny fish. That's what you think. Here is my head. Here is my fin. And here is my tail. Whoa! You really are too big to fit in our boat. So, how do we catch you? Just toss me your worms and I will swim to the shore. Hmm, that sounds fishy. I promise, I will see you at the shore. Just toss me the worms. All of them? I'm a very big fish. Uh, okay. Gobble, gobble, gobble. Guess what? We are going to take home the biggest fish ever, 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 and ever. Yay, high five. Splash. Oops, we missed the boat. Okay, back to shore. Here we are. Where's our fish? There it is. Come to Papa. Nice to see you here at the shore. Bye now. Hey, wait. You promised. I promised to see you at the shore. And I did see you. Thanks for the worm. Ooh, here comes the shopkeeper. Hi, Miss Froggy. Hi. Hi, boys. So, that fish got away? It was the biggest fish ever! Yes, the biggest fish is always the one that got away. Don't feel bad. You aren't the first to learn that lesson from a fish. Really? We learned something? 
High five! Thanks, Miss Froggy. Noodle heads. Hey, Mom! Mom, we did what you said. We went out and we learned something. A fish taught us. A fish? Tell me all about it. We went fishing and a fish taught us that the biggest fish is always the one that got away. It's true, we had the biggest fish and it got away. Plus, we also learned that you need money if you want a big boat. Also, we found out that if you want to go boating, you have to learn the ropes. Oh my, you learned so much. I bet you need a snack. Fishy crackers and gummy worms. Learning is fun, but guess what? We did not learn the one thing we wanted to learn. How to catch a fish. We'll go out and learn that tomorrow. Hope you enjoyed this story. I'll see you next time. Bye bye. For social studies this month, we are learning all about occupations. In this week's class, we are learning about teachers with this book by Cecilia Minden. Let's go. Hello, my name is Maria. Many people live and work in my neighborhood. Each of them helps the neighborhood in different ways. I thought of all the things I like to do. I like to go to school. I like helping others learn new skills. How can I help my neighborhood when I grow up? I know I could be a teacher. Teachers enjoy learning. They know a lot about many different subjects. Teachers are good at helping students build new skills. Best of all, teachers get to help others learn. Learn about this neighborhood helper. The best way to learn is to ask questions. Words such as who, what, where, when and why will help me learn about being a teacher. Who can become a teacher? Girls and boys who enjoy learning and helping others may want to become teachers, like me. There are many different kinds of teachers. They help others learn from kindergarten all the way through college. Teachers are important helpers in the neighborhood. They teach people how to read, write, solve problems and learn new skills. How can I explore this job? Ask your teacher about his job. Where did he go to school? How did he decide to become a teacher? And what does he like best about teaching? Meet a teacher. This is Cindy Tree. Her students call her Miss Tree. She is a reading teacher at a school in Arlington, Virginia. Miss Tree teaches children to become better readers and writers. When Miss Tree is not in the classroom, she likes to swim, play tennis, read books and write in her journal. Look at this. Where can I learn to be a teacher? Teachers usually go to college. They take classes in many subjects because they have to help students learn many different things. Most teachers have to take a special test to get a teaching license. Teachers never stop learning. They sometimes take classes in the summer while your students are on vacation. How much school will I need? Public school teachers must have a four-year college degree. This is in America. They must also take teacher training classes. Many states require education past college. Teachers must pass tests given by the state where they live. They are then given a license so they can work. What does a teacher need to do the job? Miss Tree loves books. She has many books for her students to read. Miss Tree often uses a dry erase board when she is teaching. Sometimes Miss Tree's students have writing projects. She asks them to share what they write. Students then take turns sitting in a chair called the author's chair. There they read what they wrote to the other children in the class. What are some tools I will use? Books, computers, dry erase board, markers, internet, paper and pen or pencil. That's it. That's all you need to be a teacher. What clothes will I wear? For men, dress shirt or sweater and slacks. For women, blouse or sweater and slacks. It is helpful for both men and women teachers to wear comfortable shoes. Where does a teacher work? Miss Chui's school has several classrooms, a gym for sport, 
and a playground for recess. There is also a computer lab and a library stacked with books for the children to read. Miss Tree usually comes to school early in the morning. She meets with other teachers to think of fun activities for the students. Miss Tree then meets with younger students later in the morning. She teaches these students how to read. What's it like where I work? Teachers usually work in classrooms. These are clean and well lighted. Sometimes teachers work outdoors. They watch children on the playground and during outdoor field trips. Ooh, how much money will I make? In America, most teachers make between $40,000 to $45,000 a year. Miss Tree works with older children in the afternoon. They already know how to read. She helps them to become better readers. The students leave in the afternoon, but most teachers stay after school to attend meetings and to get their classrooms ready for the next day. Now, who works with teachers? Many people actually work with Miss Tree at school. They include a principal, a librarian, a nurse, a coach, a secretary, a bus driver, a custodian, volunteers, and others who want to help students learn. What other jobs might I like? There's librarian, library media specialist, principal, recreation worker, and teacher's aide. Look at this. Many teachers also use their free time to help students perform in a reader's theater. When is a teacher a director? Teacher's work doesn't always take place inside a classroom. They often help students with extracurricular activities. Miss Tree and her students like to perform in a reader's theatre. The students choose a favourite book and make a play using the characters from the book. They practice a lot. They like to perform their play for family and friends. Miss Tree uses a video camera to record the play. She sends copies of the recording home to parents who are not able to come to the play. How might my job change as a teacher? Some teachers go on to become principals, counsellors, and library media specialists. Pretty cool, huh? I want to be a teacher. I think being a teacher would be a great way to be a neighborhood helper. Someday you may see me in front of a classroom. Why don't you try being a teacher? Do you think you would like being a teacher? Why don't you create a how-to book? How-to books have instructions that show people how to do different things. You could teach someone how to tell a joke, make a peanut butter sandwich, jump rope or whatever you know how to do. Being a teacher is pretty cool, huh? What do you think about being a teacher? Share with me down below. Do you want to be a teacher too? If so, what subject do you want to teach? After this, I'll see you in the next class for some more learning fun. That's all for today. I'll see you next time. Bye bye. Hello everyone. Welcome back to Happy Learning Club. For Animal World this week, we are reading about coyotes with this book by Emily K. Green. Let's go. Coyotes are a type of wild dog. They are also called prairie wolves. Most coyotes have brown, grey or yellow fur. Coyotes have bushy tails with black tips, like that one. Coyotes have yellow eyes and pointed ears. They also have sharp teeth. Those are some very sharp teeth. Coyotes eat berries, grass and insects. Ooh, that's a very healthy dog. Coyotes also eat small animals like birds, rabbits and mice. Coyotes are good hunters. Coyotes live in forests, prairies and deserts. Most coyotes live in packs. A pack has between three to six coyotes. Coyotes bark, yip and howl. They howl to call their packs together. Ow! That's a howl. Now let's go through the five words we learnt in this book today. The first one is howl, which is a loud, long, sad sound, like ow. Insects are small animals with six legs and a hard outer body. 
insect bodies are divided into three parts. Packs are groups of the same kind of animals that live together. Here we learn about the pack of coyotes. There are also packs of wolves, packs of dogs. Wild is living in nature. You're living in the wilderness. And yip is a short bark or cry like this. Ow, ow, ow. Very good. What do you think about the coyotes? Do you think they're cool or scary or interesting? Let me know down below and also share with me what are some things you learned about the coyotes this week. That's all for Animal World today. I'll see you next week to learn about another interesting animal. Thank you. Bye bye. For the next five weeks of social studies, we are going to be learning about the five senses. In today's class, we are beginning with seeing with this book by Lisa Owings. Let's go. Weekend Art Fair. Today is Art Fair Day. You look through the displays. Many paintings are dripping with bold colors. Interesting shapes catch your eye. You bend close to study each work of art. Racks of photos display different places. You spot a beach you have visited. Smiling at the memory, you buy the photo. You look up as you leave the fair. The sky is just starting to glow pink. Wow! What is seeing? Our eyes allow us to see the shapes and colors of our world. The objects we see either make or reflect light. Some of this light reaches our eye, like this. First, that light hits the cornea, which is the clear front layer of the eye that bends light towards the pupil. What we see as a black dot is really the window into the eye. The colored iris opens and closes around the pupil. This controls how much light reaches the lens. So here, when there's more light to the lens, the pupil gets bigger. With less light, the pupil gets smaller. Just behind the iris, the lens focuses light onto the retina at the back of the eye. The retina is filled with rod and cone cells. Cones sense color and detail. Rods sense size, shape and brightness. These cells send messages to the brain along the optic nerve. Then the brain reads the image. What seeing teaches? Of all the senses, the brain spends the most energy on seeing. Everything we see helps us understand the world. Sight helps us know how to move our bodies. We see how far to move to catch a ball or avoid bumping into someone. Our eyes help us find patterns. Faces are patterns we easily recognize and remember. So are the letters and numbers that let us read and do math. We use our eyes to study our surroundings and the actions of others. Our eyes spot danger to keep us safe. They also show us beauty in the world. Now let's go through some of the words we learnt in today's book. Cone is a cell on the retina that lets us see colour and detail. Cones lie mostly around the centre of the eye and need bright light to work well. Cornea is the clear outer layer of the eye. The cornea covers the iris and pupil. Detail is a small part of a larger whole. Focuses means to bend rays of light, forcing them to meet on the retina. Image is a picture of an object. The iris is the colored part of the eye that surrounds the pupil. The iris loosens or tightens to let in more or less light. The lens is the clear part of the eye that bends light to land on the retina. The optic nerve is the nerve that sends messages from the retina to the brain. 
patterns are things that are repeated. Pupil is the round black dot at the center of the eye. Light enters the eye through the pupil. Reflect is to bend light from a surface in an opposite direction. Retina is the thin lining at the back of the eye that is filled with rod and cone cells. And finally, rod is a cell on the retina that lets us see in dim light and make out size and shape. Now it's your turn to share what you think and feel about seeing. Share with me down below why you think seeing is so important and then write down what are some things you learned in today's class. After this, I'll see you in the next class for some more learning fun. That's all for now. I'll see you later. Bye-bye. For reading comprehension today, we are reading Hansel and Gretel and the Green Witch by Laura North and Chris Jevons. At the end of the story, we have some comprehension questions to see how well you understand the book. Are you ready? Hansel and Gretel liked to watch TV. What's on next, Hansel? asked Gretel. I don't know, said Hansel. Past potato chips. Hansel and Gretel also liked to eat. They woofed down cookies and gobbled cupcakes. Their father, the woodcutter, was worried. My children will never move from that sofa. One day, the woodcutter thought of a plan. I will lay a trail of doughnuts to lead the children into the forest. He said, they'll eat them all and then they'll have to get some exercise to make their way back home. The donut trail lay gleaming in the sunlight, a cream-filled path with raspberry icing. Yum, said Gretel. One by one, they ate the donuts, leading them into the middle of the forest. It's gotten dark, said Hansel. I'm still hungry, said Gretel, even though she had eaten 23 donuts. Suddenly, they saw a house. I think it's made of vegetables. Yuck, cried Gretel. A witch suddenly appeared. Is that a donut? she croaked. I like to eat children but only active, healthy ones. The children started to run, but the witch easily caught up to them. First, she forced the children to do an obstacle course. Please don't make us do any more exercise, begged Hansel. But the next day, she made them swim laps in the lake. I can't swim another stroke, cried Gretel. Give me 10 push-ups for complaining, cried the witch. On the third day, the witch made them jump over hurdles, throw heavy iron balls, and run a half marathon. You're starting to look good enough to eat, she said hungrily. I am so hungry I could eat a house said Gretel. She started tearing off part of the roof. Hansel and Gretel ate the vegetable door, the vegetable chimney, and the vegetable table. The children looked fit and healthy. Now you're ready to be my dinner, said the witch. But Hansel and Gretel were full of energy. You can't catch us, they shouted, and they sped off quickly. Hansel and Gretel ran all the way home. They told their father what had happened. The woodcutter was glad to see them. I'm sorry for sending you into the forest, he said. I just wanted you to get some exercise. That night, Hansel and Gretel turned the TV off. They cooked a big healthy meal made from bits of the witch's house that they had taken with them. Wow, what a great story. Now it's your turn to see how well you understood the story. Are you ready? Let's start the quiz and answer some questions. Question 1. Who are the main characters in the story? Is it the woodcutter and Hansel? Hansel and the witch? Hansel and Gretel? Or donuts and chips? What do you think? I'll give you a moment. If you answered Hansel and Gretel, you are correct. Question 2. Why was it so easy for the witch to catch up to Hansel and Gretel? Was it because the children could not run very quickly because they were not used to exercising? Or 
Was it because the children were too busy eating junk food to realize they were in danger? Or was it because the witch was much faster than the children because she is older? Or is it because Hansu tripped over Gretel and the two fell on the road? What do you think? I'll give you a moment. The answer is A. The children could not run very quickly because they were not used to doing exercise. Very good. Question 3 is... Why did Hansu and Gretel's father send them into the forest in the first place? Is it because they promised to help him chop wood for a fire? Because he needed them out of the house so he could take a nap? Was it because he wanted them to do some exercise so they could get healthy? Or did he send them to buy some milk? What do you think? I'll give you a moment. The answer is C. He wanted them to get some exercise so they would be healthy. Did you get that one right? If so, let's do question 4. How were Hansu and Gretel able to finally escape from the witch? Was it because the children had found a new love for running and exercising? Or because the children tricked the witch into letting them sneak into the forest? Or because they ate the vegetables and gained super speed? Or was it because the witch helped them get fit healthy and full of great veggies. What do you think? I'll give you a moment. If you answer D, the witch helped them get fit, healthy and full of great veggies, you are correct. Very good. Now, how many questions did you get right? If you got all four answers, that means you got 100% and you're amazing. Very good. What do you think about Hansu and Gretel and the Green Witch? Let me know down below and share with me what are some things you liked about this story. After this, I'll see you in the next class for some more reading fun. That's all for now. I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.